Hi, Denny Johnson here, and this is part of the Rayet International Facebook group. This is a case study about the epigenetic influences of our family tree and how they affect our happiness and well-being. I'd like to share with you how this works. To even consider this may change your very perception of how life and health actually interrelate. This is the family tree. These symbols in red are primarily the father and his parents and grandparents. These symbols in blue are primarily the mother's family, her parents and grandparents. The symbol of a U is where you would fit in this map. Each one of these parents and grandparents, they have their own personal experiences. And now it's scientifically confirmed that these emotional stressors are now attached to our DNA through a process called epigenetics. That's what it's about. I'm going to share with you one very interesting case study that I came across and have thus also repeated several other times in different situations. Consider this. A mother brought me her 12-year-old son. At the age of 12, this boy developed a condition which was quite unusual. Anytime he walked to the door at night, he would have a panic attack so severe that he would stop breathing and in some cases was hospitalized. This went on for a series of months. In the morning, he could walk through the door no problem at all. So they brought, first thing we do, we look at this connection. The relationship to breathing is primarily activated by one grandfather. Yes, I know that's a challenging thing to consider, that one particular grandfather has a great deal to do with our capacity to breathe. Yes, all of the ancestry influences our capacity to breathe, but one particular grandfather, which is mother's father, he's primarily responsible for the lung line, or the breathing capacity. So once, once there's a difficulty with a child about breathing, one of the first places I go is I look at the relationship between the mother and her father first. This is the first bridge to this breathing capacity. In this case, the boy's relationship to his mother has been solid. No loss of connection here. The mother had a strong relationship to her own father. No difficulty there and the grandson knew his grandfather. Boy number one, grandfather number one, have a very close connection. As we examined the rest of the history, an interesting thing came into light. We asked the mother about her own father's mother, her grandmother. This is the mother of her father. And she explained that the grandmother, her grandmother, was a prostitute. This prostitute conceived her son from an unknown source. She did not know what man was the father of this particular child. This boy was raised in the house of his grandmother and mother. And each time that this woman, this prostitute, his mother, went to the door at night, the grandmother of this particular boy would start to yell at her own daughter, the devil's going to get you, you're going to hell. This form of fear instilled in this boy about his mother produced a terror in this boy. How is it now, virtually, nearly a hundred years later, the great-grandson of this particular prostitute now has a epigenetic influence in him that when he walks to the door at night, he re-triggers the experience of the terror in his own grandfather and disallows his own capacity to breathe. An extraordinary example of how Behavioral patterns and feelings and terror is transferred through generations. That's part of the story. What we suggested in this case, 
But this woman here, the mother of the boy, she engaged in the directed use of prayer to, according to her own religion, to basically pray for the release of this anger and judgment in her own grandmother. Just to give you another side to this, the boy's mother had had two years of blood in her own bladder. Just so you know, blood in the bladder is anger in the bladder. The bladder is ruled by this position here. This position relative to the boy's mother is also the immune system. She had had two years of a low-grade cancer in her immune system, two years of blood in her bladder, as a result of the transference of this unresolved feeling. This is how it works. By the use of the directed use of prayer into this area, specifically about this terror, within two days this boy could walk through the front door at night and no longer had a problem again. It took about four months for her bleeding bladder to stop. It took approximately another two years for her to reverse the, the condition in her immune system to be able to be cancer free. Now, I'm just reporting to you what I've seen happen in a situation like this. Two things are remarkable. One, is it truly possible that an unresolved terror from a great-grandparent over a hundred years ago in some cases can actually travel down to lodge in a specific part of the emotions or body of a great-grandchild? The answer is yes. Yes, it does do this. Now consider if you have 12 different grandparents, what experiences have they gone through? And for me there's two primary polarities. Terror is a big one that covers many forms of abandonment and losses and oftentimes how we feel about ourselves. And then there is the other side which is hatred, terror and hatred. Hatred has to do with how we feel about someone else or how we want to control an outcome, treachery and betrayal, and manipulation, jealousy. All of those are about a form of relationship control. How many forms of these deeply personal emotions do you might even consider that we have lodged inside of us at varying degrees of operation where at times without even knowing it, a color or a flavor or a fragrance, um, a, a landscape, something comes by and subtly triggers us, gradually causing us to diminish our capacity to feel, to hear, to see, the mobility of the body. How many of these epigenetic issues are flowing through us all the time and most of the time we have no idea they're even there, but they're operating. That in itself is remarkable. The other thing to consider is she did something to be able to begin the process of removing it. Now I'm not personally sure whether it was the knowledge, the truth about what the influences were occurring. Was it the knowledge that be able to set this condition free? Or was it something else? Was it the prayer? I don't know. You're going to have to decide for yourself. Later on we can talk about each one of these places in the family tree and how they relate to different body systems where jealousy can affect the pancreatic function, guilt can affect the kidney function, shame, the bladder, and on and on. All of these different places. Eventually we can use the physical conditions that we find ourselves or our family to be in to locate where these epigenetic markers may be and what we might do to be able to change them for ourselves and the future. This is Food for Thought. Denny Johnson here. See you again sometime.